There's one thing I can say for sure about the big, much-hyped 60-minute sit-down with Stormy Daniels, and that is it was Bafo at the box office. Early ratings showing that CBS got the highest number for its news magazine show in 10 years. I think it probably even boosted the ratings of the Duke-Kansas game because it went into overtime and it went past 7 Eastern, so people tuning in to see Stormy saw some b-ball. Uh, so what are we to make of this? I mean, we all knew what Stormy Daniels was going to say about her encounter. She now says it's a one-time consensual sexual encounter with Donald Trump back in 2006 uh, because she'd already given that interview to In Touch magazine. And she'd gone into detail. So that was not a surprise. It was interesting to see how she handled Anderson's Coop Anderson Cooper's questions. He mostly asked good questions, more aggressive, I thought, than he was with the former Playboy model Karen McDougal in his own CNN interview. Uh, she came across as a kind of a businesswoman. There's none of this, oh, I was so in love with him. She didn't particularly want to sleep with him and all that. All fascinating for people who like this sort of stuff. But the thing is that her attorney, Michael Avenatti, had been on more than 20 television appearances, and he had jacked up expectations to the point that probably no interview was going to meet them, but this one certainly did not because it didn't really advance the story on any of the key elements uh, beyond the fact that she says she had sex with Donald Trump, which I think, given that when it was that he was a celebrity businessman, nobody thought he was a choir boy, doesn't really have a, a lot of political resonance. It's embarrassment for the president, obviously. So there was this question of the threat. Avenatti said there was a physical threat. You're going to hear about that. Stormy Daniels says that in 2011, before Trump was in politics, but when she was thinking of selling her story to a magazine, she was in the parking lot, uh, a car with her daughter, and a man who she does not know came up to her and says, leave Trump alone, forget the story. Uh, saw her daughter, beautiful little girl, be ashamed if something happened to her mom. Well, that's pretty chilling if it happened. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but Stormy Daniels says, she doesn't know who that guy is. She didn't go to the police. So it's impossible for any of us to verify it or to know whether this was somebody associated with Trump world. The same thing happened, uh, you have to remember now that while she's now telling the story, there were two or three different times as recently as last January when Stormy Daniels allowed statements to be put out in her name saying, no, no, this never happened, no affair, no hush money, whatever. So when asked about that, uh, she said she felt pressured telling Anderson Cooper the exact sentence used was, they can make your life hell in many different ways. They being, I'm not exactly sure who they were. I believe it to be Michael Cohen. So she doesn't know who pressured her. They, she can't say who they is. Michael Cohen, the president's personal lawyer, did, admits, acknowledges, uh, pay her $130,000 at the end of the campaign to keep quiet. He's told that to me. He doesn't dispute it. He says it wasn't trying to influence the campaign. His distinction is he was trying to help uh, protect his friend and client Donald Trump uh, against an embarrassing story that he believed to be untrue. So Cohn has now sent a cease and desist uh, letter to Stormy Daniels. Don't repeat these charges. And finally, there was the photos, the text. You remember Avenatti uh, posted or tweeted this picture of a CD. She had all this evidence. Well, maybe she does. But when asked about it by Anderson Cooper, on the advice of my lawyer, I'm not going to go into that. So on any single thing looking for a headline, yes, she says she was threatened. And the media coverage is, you know, Stormy Daniels speaks. Stormy Daniels says she had an affair. Stormy Daniels says she was threatened. But it's, it's a journalistic responsibility to say she can't say by who. She doesn't know who the guy is. She can't say who they were in terms of pressuring her. And unless she has more specifics, yes, this will play out as a legal battle. And it could eventually, I suppose, lead to some kind of presidential deposition if they're lucky. Um, but at the same time, I think the fact that they didn't advance the story uh, means that it could fade in a few days. There wasn't a lot new here other than the thing that we all knew to expect. Uh, I can also safely predict that Stormy Daniels is going to continue to get a lot of money, which is what she wanted, uh, by going out and speaking out on the nation's top news magazine when she does her strip club circuit or her dancing. She's going to have a pretty big payday, but I don't know the political resonance right now given the fact that she didn't really advance the story.